we gather. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Because Jeremiah speaks the truth of God, he becomes a man of contradiction, a threat to the status quo. He is persecuted by the leaders who only listen to what they want to hear. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princesses said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in the city. And all the people, by speaking such things to them, he is not interested in the welfare of our people but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power. For the king could do nothing with them. And so, they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Balkea, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud. And Jeremiah sunk into the mud. Abed Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault, and all they have done for the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern he will die of famine on the spot for there is no more food in the city then the king ordered a bed melech the koshite 
to take three men along with him and throw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Christian must always look up to the example of Jesus in his struggle to be faithful to the Father. In enduring the cross, Jesus is glorified by the Father. The happiness that awaits us should inspire us not to abandon the struggle. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it was already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Apoy at tubig. Pagkakabahagi-bahagi. Paghihintay. Yun lang po ang nais kong maalala ninyo sa misang ito. Una, apoy at tubig. Sinabi ng Panginoon, I will set the world on fire and there must and I must undergo baptism. Ano po ba ibig sabihin nun? Dadala siya ng apoy at meron siyang dapat gawin na siya'y mabautismuhan. At doon po makikita yung tubig sa bautismo. Apoy at tubig. Ang dalawang salitang ito sa Biblia ay may malalim na kahulugan at simbolismo. 
At isa sa mga simbolismo ng dalawang bagay na ito ay distraction, pagkasira o pagkawasak nang sa gayon mayroong bagong bagay na uusbong. Kung titingnan po natin sa ikalawang sulat ni Pedro, Kapitulo 3, versikulo 6 hanggang 7, sabi, Sa pamamagitan din ng tubig, ng malaking baha, ginunaw ang daigdig ng panahong iyon. At ang panahong iyon ay kailan? Kung matatandaan ninyo sa aklat ng Genesis, na ginunaw ng Panginoong Yowe, ang daigdig sa pamamagitan ng baha sa panahon ni Noah. Tuloy pa po natin. Sa pamamagitan din ng salitang iyon, ay nanatili ang mga langit at ang lupa upang tupukin ng apoy pagdating ng araw ng paghuhukom at pagpaparusa sa masasama. Sa huling araw na darating, tutupukin ng Panginoon ang lahat sa pamamagitan ng apoy at para magkaroon ng bagong Jerusalem. Mawawasak, masisira, nang sa gayon merong uusbong na bago. Ihiwala ang masama sa mabuti para magkaroon ng panibagong mundo, ng panibagong buhay. Malilinis. Ano po ba yung bautismo na sinasabi ng ating Panginoon? Yung kailangan niyang danasin. Yung tubig kung saan na doon siya malulublog. Ang salitang bautismo po, ang literal na ibig sabihin, paglulublog. Kaya nga man nung maunang panahon, paglulublog ang paraan ng pagbabaptize. At yun, ano bang kailangan danasin ng ating Panginoon na bautismo? Naalala niyo po ba yung kwento ni John at James na sabi ng kanilang nanay, Panginoon, kapag nagahari ka na, hayaan mo maupo sa iyong kanan at sa iyong kaliwa ang aking mga anak. Pero sabi ni Jesus, Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Sinabi nila, oo. Pero patungkol saan yung kopa na kailangang inumin? Yung bautismo na dapat pagdaanan? Alam nyo po, kung babasahin nyo yung buong gospel na yon, yung chapter na yon, ito ay patungkol sa nalalapit na kamatayan, pagpapapako ng ating Panginoong Yesus sa krus. Yung tubig na kailangan saan siya malulublog, ang ibig sabihin nun ay ang kanyang pagkamatay, pagpapakasakit sa krus. Hindi po lahat ng simbolismo ng tubig ay maganda. Lalo na sa panahon ngayon, tag-ulan na. ba? Diba? Ang daming bagyo, ang daming baha, at ang tubig na ito'y nakamamatay. Nakakawalan ng mga hanap buhay. Magbabago ang iyong buhay. At yun ang pinapatungkol ng ating Panginoon sa bautismo na kailangan niyang pagdadaanan. Na kailangan niyang mamatay upang magkaroon ng panibagong buhay. Mamatay ang mortal na katawan nang sa gayon mabigyan ka ng buhay na walang hanggan. Paglilinis, pagkamatay at pagkasira para umusbong ang isang bago. At ganun din ang simbolismo ng apoy. Di ba kapag ang bakal ay itinunaw o kaya pinupukpuk habang mainit, anong kinalabasan nito? Pwedeng magiging isang matibay. 
Isang napakagandang espada. Sa lumang metal ay nagkaroon ng panibagong espada. Nalinis, naging dalisay. Pero kailangan muna siyang pukbukin. Kailangan muna ang tunawin para magkaroon ng panibago. At yun ang sinisimbolismo ng apoy at tubig na ating nabasa. At pagkatapos, konektado ito sa salitang division. Sinabi ng ating Panginoon, Do you think that I have come to bring peace? Akala ba ninyo nagdala ako ng kapayapaan? Di ba napaka-contradicting ito sa ating imahe kay ating, sa ating Panginoong Yesus? na siyang magbibigay sa atin ng kapayapaan. Pero bakit ganun ang sinabi niya? Alam niyo po, hindi original na sinabi ng ating Panginoong Yesus ito. Lalo na yung sa part ng division. He is quoting the Old Testament. Kung babasahin natin, sa aklat ni Propeta Micah, Kapitulo 7, versikulo 6 hanggang 7, ito po yung pagkasabi, Lalapas tanganin ng anak na lalaki ang kanyang ama at lalabanan ng anak na babae ang kanyang ina. Aawayin ng manugang na babae ang kanyang biyanang babae. Ang kaaway ng isang tao'y ang kanya mismong kasambahay. Ngunit para sa akin, kayawe, ako mananalig. Hihintayin kong may pagkitiwala ang Diyos na maliligtas sa akin at ako'y kanyang diringgin. At ano pong konteks konteksto nun? Meron munang pag-aaway, merong pagkabahagi-bahagi bago magkaroon ng kaligtasan. Bago ka sasagipin, mayroong pagdurusa kang madaraanan. At yun ang sinasabi ng aklat ni Profeta Micah na binanggit ng ating Panginoon sa Ibanghelyo ngayon. At waring sinasabi lang ng ating Panginoong Yesus, I will fulfill what is written in the Old Testament. Sa pamamagitan ko, Magkakaroon ng pagkabahagi-bahagi sa pamamagitan ko. Magkakaroon ng pagdurusa. Pero sa pamamagitan ko, magkakaroon ka ng kaligtasan. Sa pamamagitan ko. And some of us have experienced this kind. Lalong-lalo na yung mga naging convert. sa ating reliyon, sa katolisismo. Alam nyo ba kung gano'ng kahirap yon? Meron po kaming seminarista dito, novice. Ang kanyang magulang ay Muslim, taga Indonesia. Pero nandyan siya ngayon, gustong magpare. At alam nyo ba kung anong pinagdadaanan nun? Division. Siya sana ang susunod na maging imam sa kanilang angkan. Maging pare, maging pare na Muslim, pero pinili niya maging katoliko. At nandyan siya ngayon, ay nasa Santo Domingo na pala. Muslim ang kanyang angkan. At anong nangyari? Tinakwil. Namuhay siya mag-isa, lumayo, Mahirap. At ganun ang resulta, ang consequence ng pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. You will be divided. You will be mocked. You will be cursed. At kung titignan natin sa unang pagbasa sa aklat ni Profeta Jeremias, kung napakinggan ninyo ang binasa, 
Anong nangyari kay Propeta Jeremiah? Itinapon siya sa balon na walang tubig at ang laman ng balon ay putik. Anong dahilan? Dahil siya ay nagpapaliwanag, nagtuturo ng katotohanan, nataliwas sa status quo, nataliwas sa kanilang pinaniniwalaan. Tinapon siya doon sa balon. At ano pong aral na makikita natin sa ating mga pagbasa sa buhay po natin makakaranas po tayo ng mga pagsubok sa buhay marami po tayong pagdadaanan hindi po lahat palagi sarap hindi lahat ng panahon masagana hindi lahat ng panahon tayo'y nakangiti hindi lahat ng panahon na aayon sa ating kagustuhan ang lahat ng mangyayari. But there will be a point in our life that we will suffer. There will be a point in our life that we will cry. At hindi natin alam kung saan papunta. At sa mga panahon nito, anong dapat natin gawin? Marami po. Pero kung titingnan natin kung anong nakasabi sa Salmong Tugunan, kung napakinggan po ninyo, anong sabi? Lord, come to my aid. I have waited and waited for the Lord and He stooped toward me. He drew me out of the pit of destruction out of the mud and of the swamp. He set my feet upon a crag. He made firm my steps. Does it ring a bell? That He put you out of the pit of destruction? Saan yun? Doon sa balon na pinagtapunan kay Jeremiah. Na si Jeremiah ay nag-iisa, nalulungkot, natatakot. Nandun sa balon, out of the mud and swamp, but the Lord came to His help. At anong kanyang ginawa? He waited patiently with the Lord. Minsan po sa mga pagkakatao na tayo ay nakakaroon ng problema, ng maraming pagsubok, we can't do anything but patiently wait with the Lord. Patiently wait, because something will happen. Something good will come out of this. Something good, because there is God who is good. Paghintay ka. Dahil siguro hindi pa oras. Paghintay ka. Dahil siguro may tinutugunan pang iba ang ating Panginoon. Maghintay ka. Makakayanan mo pa rin yan. Maghintay ka. Dahil may mabuting mangyayari sa buhay mo. Pag kang bumitaw, kumapit ka. Maghintay ka. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken for the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Your radical love, Father, that we experience through your Son, Jesus, moves us towards radical choices and changes in our lives. Help us to always choose you above all things, so we may live the fullness of life you have originally intended for us. Full of trust, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Father, make us love you more and more. In the spirit of synodality, may our church leaders remain faithful channels of your grace as they lovingly listen to the needs of the flock you have entrusted them. We pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Moved by your overwhelming and radical love for humanity and all of creation, may our national and local leaders and we, the citizenry, always and everywhere opt to make radical choices towards the common good and the care of our common home. We pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Heeding your example of unconditional love, Father, May all families grow stronger in love. Help them make the radical choice to stay in love with each other, especially in times when it is most difficult to love. We pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Welcome our departed loved ones who have chosen you above all things in their earthly life into your heavenly kingdom. We pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, make us love you more and more. We include in our prayers the intentions of this Mass and for the intentions of the devotees and pilgrims of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, make us love you more and more. God, our Father, in your Son's incarnation, mission, passion, death, and resurrection, you made manifest your radical intent to love and redeem us. Help us mirror that same love towards one another so we too may become active agents of your communion and salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice in yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by suffering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take these all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do these in memory of me The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. In the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Please all stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Please stand. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through the sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to this image on earth, we may inherit also to be his co heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikisa sa banal na misa at patuloy po nating ipagdasal ang isa't isa. Mag-ingat po kayo mamaya sa pag-uwi. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that, in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the blessing of rosaries and other religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, candles, oils, and images, and other religious articles be blessed and be made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.